This is New Cap News. Well, Lakeland College will be launching a new program this fall. Administrative Professional is a one-year blended certificate program at the Lloydminster campus, a combination of face-to-face -face and online material. Students would complete featured courses such as basic accounting, then finish with a three-week practicum. Chair of the Business Department, Ben Akwe, says this will help them thrive in the workplace. We want to make sure they have a great time in the classroom, but also demonstrate to us they are ready to go out to the, to the job market. And this practical placement fills that need. Akwe says social media marketing is a huge component with the current direction the business world is going. To also go, to, go through social media, pick up some key items which would benefit their employer and bring it to bear in decisions and in discussions about doing things for customers. Those interested in the program can find out more at a business information session on March 2nd. And the local Citizens on Patrol chapter is in need of new members and is calling on the public to step up. Chantel Germo reports. Citizens on Patrol, or COP, has been operating in Lloydminster since 1999 and aims to keep neighborhoods safe by including volunteers of the community to join in on the policing process. It's one thing for police to always go out and, and do things and investigate and be part of uh, proactive aspects of policing, but being able to have individuals from the community doing that, it just only makes policing stronger. Recently, there has been a decrease in members, going from 36 at the end of 2016 to now operating with only 18. According to Greg Mathias, president of COP, this is all due to the downturn in the economy. It fluctuates. Uh, people have moved, they've lost their jobs, so they've had to move on. Uh, we've had a few members that just wasn't for them, so they've carried on. So the more members that we have, the more patrolling we can do, and the better job we can do to help the RCMP. Being a member is not too much of a commitment, as the group only asks for a couple hours a month patrolling the neighbourhoods and city and being an extra set of eyes and ears for the RCMP. You know, I think people can can go home knowing that uh, they they did a little bit. Uh, they did some good for the community. They they helped the RCMP. They they helped the community be a safer place. And and uh, yeah, it it's really a, it really is a rewarding experience. If you would like to be a member, you can email citizens on patrol at lloydcop at gmail dot com. Chantal Germo, Newcap News. Well, the highly anticipated sports facility behind Holy Rosary High School is starting to take shape. With the framework now standing, excitement is starting to build. The Synergy Vault will be the home for Holy Rosary baseball, softball, soccer and football programs, which teachers say will have a huge impact on student athletics. I'm incredibly excited for the Synergy Vault to be opening. It's going to be an awesome opportunity for kids to take their uh, athletics to the next level. But teachers also say the impact isn't just limited to the students. I think it's going to be amazing for the community having such a great facility with uh, so uh, so many dimensions to it with uh, different sports that they can come in and play at top levels throughout the year. The artificial turf and indoor elements will be done in the next few months and the facility is set to open in April. While well, tickets are still available for the Dreaming Out Loud Children's Ball and the second annual Transplant Trot goes this weekend, Heather Clagus has the details in this week's What's Happening. Kids can have hours and hours of fun at a playground just like this one. And out in Kitscotty at the elementary school, they're in need of a new playground, so they're kicking off the fundraising tomorrow night with a huge kickoff party at the community hall in Kitscotty. They're going to have hot dogs, smokies, a nacho bar, a live band, a dance, a whole lot more going on at the hall. If you want to get your tickets, they're $30 and things get underway tomorrow evening at 6.30. You've got another chance to pick up tickets for the Dreaming Out Loud Children's Ball. It's coming up in the spring, but your next chance to get tickets is coming up tomorrow at the Farmer's Market at the Service Sports Centre. This event is a fundraiser for the Lloydminster Interval Home, and it's a really fun afternoon and evening geared toward kids. And the theme this year is Neverland, so you just might see Peter Pan and Tinkerbell make an appearance. If you want to pick up your tickets, you can get them tomorrow.
We want you to start your weekend by winning. How about a copy of Ronnie Dunn's brand new album, Tattooed Heart? He's got some huge hits on here, including Ain't No Trucks in Texas, and some special guests, including Kix Brooks and Reba McIntyre. If you want a copy, it's really easy. All you have to do is email your name and daytime phone number to tvcontest at newcap.ca. We want to say thanks to John at Universal Music Canada for setting us up with the music. And tomorrow morning, you've got the chance to go for a five kilometer walk or run to help out a great cause. It's the second annual transplant trot here in Lloydminster. Things get underway at the Service Sports Centre at nine o'clock. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Heather Cleggis, and that's what's happening. This is New Cap Sports. Lakeland College Athletics has a big weekend on tap with multiple teams fighting for playoff spots. Here's Lance Phillips and Josh Ryan to get you caught up on the weekend games. Thanks Nicole, Josh, a big weekend here at Lakeland campus. Men's and women's volleyball, men's and women's basketball playing Nate beginning tonight with women's and men's basketball. And it's a big game for both teams. It really is, especially for the women. They're only one win ahead of the Keanu Huskies for the fourth seed in the Northeast Division. They really need to get not only a split here with Nate, but then to play consistent ball the rest of the way. And this could really kickstart that for them. Playing an all-star in Torrey Hill from the Oops, and need great play continuing from Nike Lee, who's been very good the last couple of weeks. Do you think that a win against Nate in one of these two nights is pivotal? I think it's absolutely pivotal. You need that breathing room. You don't want to put all of the weight of the season into one weekend coming up. And for the men's side, this is really an opportunity for them to show that they can play with the big dogs. Absolutely. They did show they can last semester where they beat Nate, the first Nate's first loss of the season. And now Nate's on a bit of a losing streak. They've split their last two weekends with Grand Prairie and with Keanu. So a chance for them to possibly get even a shot at the second seed, which would be massive come playoff time. Now on the, on the volleyball side, the women's volleyball team has all but locked up a playoff spot at this point, so they're looking solid. It's the men's side that's struggling a little bit, trying to secure their spot. Absolutely. They still are two wins back of the Augustana Vikings for the fourth seed in the North and uh, have a lot of tough matchups coming up. This one, obviously, with Nate. They're a bolstered team, guys back from the break after being injured. And uh, Lakeland on the other side has a couple injuries to deal with. Tyson Ween's game time decision tonight, as well Braden Griffith coming off of a shoulder injury, and he may not be 100 percent coming in so those are two key pieces of their team that they're really going to need to perform well for them. On the women's side as I mentioned they're in good position. What do you like about them against this Nate team? Well I really like that Laura Popplestone has uh, brought kind of a steadying presence to them. I like that they have uh, much more experience than the Ukes, a little bit more size as well in the middle and uh, they just have to make sure they play consistently, don't get injured, because that's the worst thing to do at this time of the year, but be ready and don't have any lulls, because this Nate team, they're fighting for the fourth seed themselves, and they're gonna play desperate. So if the wrestlers want to have a shot at still getting second in the division and have a good pace coming into the playoffs, they're gonna need to be steady uh, all weekend. Here. Laura Popplestone, talk about her for a quick second. Having her back on this team for this second semester is really gonna help their first year at Libero as well. It absolutely will, and it'll help their serve receive out as well, which has been one of their weak points so far this year. Well, basketball, volleyball, this weekend at Lakeland College, it's bound to be good. Back to you. The Chalk Wagon racing schedule doesn't start until June, but that didn't stop the CPCA and Lloyd Minster exhibition from holding a major CPCA finals press conference today. Our Lance Phillips at the X grounds for an exciting announcement. Thanks, Nicole. It was an exciting day at the Lloyd Minster exhibition. For over 60 years, the CPCA has been a staple in the Midwest region, and today they revealed something that should get a lot of drivers excited, and it wasn't this yellow Dodge Viper behind me. Chuck Wagon Racing is steeped in tradition and Western heritage, and we are honored to be able to continue to support Chuck Wagon Racing industry and to ensure its longevity. We would not be able to put on this caliber event without the support of a very valued of very of our very valued sponsors. As we move into our 25th year, we have some big news. We are proud to introduce our new corporate partner, Denim Chrysler, and to bring to you, bring to you newly rebranded Denim Ram Tough CPCA Finals. I'm now pleased to be joined by Owen Noble, Chairman of the CPCA Finals. Owen, we've got a beautiful truck behind us. How do you think that this truck is going to motivate drivers in the finals here in Lloydminster? 
Well, if it doesn't motivate them, I don't know what we can do because it motivates me and our, my committee just making us all excited to part of building it up for it and yeah, just everything falling into place and to see a, a prize or an award like that is great. What does it mean to the CPCA in general just to have a new corporate partner on board like Denim? Uh, you know what? I, I, it just I think it's just a, it's a change. Everybody needs to change and just the excitement to get new people involved with it and just run with it kind of thing. And like not that anything was bad. It's just that it's a nice every now and then. It's nice to change and just I think it's just going to help everybody up. And the few drivers that were here, I was glad to see them here and them to take a look at that. And it might give them a little harder push to run for something. Uh, fans of the sport, do you think that this sort of thing kind of motivates more people to come out and watch? How do you think it helps fans? Oh, I think it helped because that way it's kind of like a domino effect. Like you're, once you get the sponsorship and you get the drivers on board and, and uh, get them excited, they bring better quality to the races and then the fans come and they see it and it's just, it's just a building block. And the more the fans like it, the more they come, word of mouth, and yeah, it's well, just ongoing. Thank you very much. Thank you. CPA, CPCA season just around the corner, and this truck should bring some drivers some extra motivation, that is for sure.